All right, chapter 28. You can't see that from here, but, well, yeah, you can. It's right there. Look at that, 28. Chapter 28, uh, Introduction to Organometallic Compounds. So um, we're going to say, I'll, I'll, this, this, um, this talk is just about what is an organometallic compound and what, what can we expect, okay? So what are organic metallic compounds? Man, am I saying that right? Look at this. Organo, watch this, R, metallic, M, right? What are organometallic compounds? Well, it's that, right? You have alkyl groups and aerial groups and acyl groups and such, and metals, right? So synthesis of complex organic compounds can take months or years to complete. Um, let me not say anything about that. Klein's got an interesting couple sentences on that in the book. Go have a look at it. Okay, so organometallic compounds are extremely useful. Yes, overall yields for complex syntheses depend greatly on the number of steps. Yes, and efficiency. Yields is important here. Synthesis is important. And if we can reduce the number of steps and efficiency of every step, then we can get lots more product. Okay, so we use organometallic compounds a lot and stuff like this. That's what we're doing here. All right, now, this is where we're, we're gonna start, start to uh, gain some power. Look at this, we have a metal and we have an R group here, okay? So here, a metal and an R group. A metal and an R group, you see it? Now, what, say something about this bond. Look at that bond and say something about it. Well, in order to do that, we probably need to be thinking about electronegativity, something I think you've gotten pretty good at. You got good at that in, in principles too. So predict the direction of polarity in the organometallic bonds highlighted above. So the, the electronegativity of carbon is about 2.5 and metals are low, let's say one. 2.5 to 1, 2.5 to 1, right? Look at that. And the difference in those is what dictates how polar this bond is. So can you see the difference is about 1.5, right? Now these don't have all the same electronegativity, so we're about to get more detail on that in just a second. But for now, can you see there's a big electronegativity difference? What that means is, if there was a big enough one, it would be ionic, right? It would be ionic, and you would have a carbon with a minus charge on it and lithium with a plus charge if it was big enough electronegativity difference, right? And, and it, w what you heard me say a couple of weeks ago was that when you see an organometallic compound, it's basically what we're dealing with. It was just awesome because you've gotten very good at dealing with that, a nucleophile, right? So that's where we're going with this. That's the whole point of this uh, chapter. So now, Given the electronegativity is given below, explain how the identity of metal affects the reactivity. So if magnesium is 1.2 and lithium is 1, uh, then you're going to have very much, right? Magnesium is also about 1, which we said in the previous slide, and I think I said copper was about 1 as well. That's not exactly, it's, that's really closer to two, right? So this is not, not nearly so polar. So what we might say is that this is, oh wait, wait, opposite. We might say this is almost as big, and this one's not nearly as big. Can you see what I've done with there with the size of those arrows to make my point? So um, you know that the electronegativity increases of these uh, elements as you go across the periodic table, so this should be easy to remember. Okay, so the differences in reactivity um, can be demonstrated here. That if you have, look at this, this is very cool. If you have a methyl group here with a, against an Mg, it's basically like that, which we said in chapter 13 or, four, or 14, right? So that is going to go bam. Oops, oops, oops. Bad steering. That one right there. It's gonna hit the carbon. Right? And this is gonna go up there and you're gonna get you're gonna get an alcohol. That was chapter 13. Remember that? Okay, however, 
over here with your copper lithium, this is Gilman reagent, uh, you're going to have less of that and this is not as reactive. This is not going to happen. Why? Well, because copper, because it's not such a polar bond, right? You see that? All right, I'm not sure I said it well, but it's right there in front of you. So take a look at that. That Gilman reagent is not as reactive because the electronegativity difference is not as great. Okay, so um, recall what we learned in chapter 22, which we haven't got to yet, so I'm going to put a big X through this. We'll get to this in 22 very soon, um, and I don't want to talk about that right now. This is cool, though. Very cool. We'll be using it in chapter 22.